Hi, I'm Larry Stewart, editor with 4constructionpros.com. I'm here speaking with Bob White, who's director of product marketing and planning for John Deere Construction and Forestry, finding out a little bit more about the customer adv advocate group that uh, groups that the, the uh, manufacturer has used extensively to help uh, plan and, mm -hmm. and uh, design new machines that we're seeing at ConExpo ConAg 2011. Bob, I think it's really interesting that, that I started hearing about customer ad advocate groups from, from contractors and from, mm -hmm. from equipment managers uh, many years ago, or at least 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm wondering, what kind of change does it require of a manufacturer to really integrate customer voice into the, the plain sheet design of construction equipment? Uh, great question. It, it requires a real commitment to not only get customer input often, but to get it early and to get it consistently through the whole process. So it's a matter of uh, uh, accumulating the right customers, getting them together, uh, getting them together early before the design work even starts, and then keeping with those customers through the entire design process up until it hits production. So the customers themselves make a pretty big commitment, it sounds like, to the project. They make a huge commitment. Uh, these guys come in during the design cycle probably about four times for a period of several days each where they're actually engaged with the engineers, and I'm talking uh, dozens of engineers at a time, going through every aspect of the machine. So it's a big time commitment for customers uh, formally, and it's also a commitment from customers informally with phone conversations and things in the interim. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually. Uh, uh, develop pretty good relationships with these customers through the process. Mm -hmm. Well, it, uh, it's interesting in the context of the um, uh, John Deere introduction of the high-speed dozer mm -hmm. three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you when you start talking about a machine that's a as unique and innovative as, as that machine is, yep. um, and, and I don't think I'm overstating anything by saying that, it's a, it's a fairly unique piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. D does John Deere say we want to do something different or do the custor customers bring an idea like that to, to the company and say, you know, we need to move faster, we need to do X, Y, and Z? Actually, customers come to us and say that we, want, we want to do this and this and this. Now in a project like that, we get their input and then we think of all the different ways we could actually accommodate it and we start doing some concepts. Uh, high-level concepts, we bring them in and we say, here's kind of the things we're thinking about, what do you think is the right approach? And we'll start zeroing in on these con concepts as we go. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we get them in really early in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, once, you, once you've got all that input, um, uh, do you find that the engineering process changes? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. In terms of uh, design directions, we'll bring customers in and, for instance, in control patterns for, for, a, for a new machine. We'll bring them in and uh, uh, ask them what they like, but then we'll get to the point where we, we put them in uh, 3D headgear and uh, send them in and say, try these different layouts. We'll try multiple layouts of configurations for controls hmm. and uh, get their input and it goes to the customers or the, the engineers are right there when that's going on and they're, they're taking note and they make the changes right then. They're making changes that uh, the customers are looking for. How do you keep your customers engaged in a process like this? Because I'm assuming we're talking about months here at least, if not years. We're talking years. years. Yeah, okay. You, you know, the customers get no compensation for this. But, but when you talk to them, they are thrilled to be a part of it because their compensation is actually having engineers listen to them and make the changes. This hmm. is not lip service. We don't bring them in and rubber stamp things. It's to come in and actually make changes. And these customers love seeing the changes that we make. Uh, so that is their compensation. Wow. Uh, they are, they're uh, great partners in this process. Mm -hmm. I imagine there's probably an awful lot of people who would like to participate in a project like this. I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you select? To... We try to get a broad spectrum of customers. In fact, it's, uh, it's people who are John Deere customers, and it's people who are not John Deere customers, because we want all their perspectives. So we'll actually work with our dealers and with our uh, corporate business division and identify customers that we think would be good candidates, people that not only have a view of the equipment, but have a view of the business. I see. Okay. And, and then 
uh, so you go through this process and you, you, you've um, uh, in, incorporated a lot of customer input in, into a new machine and you roll out a, an introduction mm -hmm. uh, like, like what we're uh, going to see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, what advantages does that give uh, John Deere in terms of, of marketing those machines and, and how do you take maximum advantage of them? Well, the advantage we get is that we know we're bringing machines to the market that are right. Um, it, it's, it's good to know that not only do you have the experience and knowledge of some really good engineers, but you feel comfortable knowing you've got a bunch of customers that are right behind you helping you figure this stuff out. Mm -hmm. So you go into the market much more confident. You know you've got it right. Um, you know, uh, we can tell the world that we that we uh, get customer input and that's a good thing. The really good thing is really having the input to make the machines right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess the machines really have to kind of tell your story for exactly. you, don't they? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And one question I, I, I failed to ask was how many customers would you get involved in, say, the, a redesign of a wheel loader? Great question. Normally we would bring about a dozen customers in and they could be customers from uh, around the country and even sometimes, depending upon the product, from around the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's about a dozen. Yeah. You also uh, uh, mentioned a, a, a hybrid, a uh, couple of hybrid, hybrid mm -hmm. wheel loaders that we're going to see tomorrow. We're very yeah. much looking forward to yeah. see, seeing those uh, hybrid electric, diesel electric uh, machines. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how did customers respond to, to that idea? Uh, did, did that idea come from customers or, or were, was that a concern that John Deere had that they wanted to incorporate into, into machinery and, and customers sort of dealt with it? Customers told us they want machines that are highly fuel efficient. And they mm. want machines that are very easily controlled, uh, great traction control and things like that. So they came to us and said, here's the kind of things that we would like to have in terms of performance. We had the engineers go back and think about what can they do to meet those customer requirements. And then uh, they give the customers some alternatives. Here's some different powertrains we could be looking at. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how we got to the point of these new uh, hybrid electric drive machines. Well, we're really looking forward to seeing the details on those on the show floor tomorrow. And Bob, I really appreciate your time tonight. Best Thank of you. luck with the show. Thank you. Appreciate Bye. it. Bye.